Hey guys, I'm Ashley Gillard, and this will be a teaching. I'm using my own um, manifestation tree of life reading to kind of show you guys what it means to um, manifest what you desire into the physical reality using the tree of life. So the Sephirot or the tree of life um, is considered a channel of divine energy from you can call it life force energy, you can call it God, you can call it spirit. It's basically spiritual channels or dimension um, to manifest what you desire into physical reality. So life force energy or the creator or God, it is in God's will to give us pleasure and to create, right? So it would be um, pointless if everything we ever wanted, God just gave it to us. Like, what would be the meaning of life? The, what is learned from that? Nothing is learned from giving your children, giving, just giving, giving, giving to someone. It actually creates an unstable um, vessel. It, it makes you unstable. If you're in a position where you're just getting, 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 getting without learning, without any work. So the tree of life, okay, before I get into that, everything exists. All right, nothing in the world, nothing is created. Everything is already existent, in existence. In the spiritual reality, in the spirit realm, it is said that 99% of what we desire or our life is in the spirit realm. And the 1% is the physical manifestation of it. So we have the spirit realm and we have the physical realm. And together, they manifest in Malkut or the kingdom. So without going into the specific and details, um, this reading helps go through each spiritual dimension. It helps to channel a physical manifestation of one of my desires and your desires from each spiritual dimension. It helps you to nav navigate it, helps me to navigate it in order to bring it into physical reality. So I'm doing my first one on my first million. So I'm just using this and sharing this with, it's really for me, but I'm sharing it with you guys as an example of a tree of life reading, especially for those who would like to order one and have a desire, something that they want to manifest and just need help manifesting it. Um, I wrote books on manifestation, but this is more specifically about using the tree of life and navigating each spirit dimension um, in order to manifest what you desire into the physical reality. We have Alexander Hicks and, you know, these different people, they teach that manifestation is you know, visualization, and you kind of just have faith and visualize what you want into physical reality. That's that's only one aspect. Spiritual communication and and connect in visualization. That's only one aspect of the dimension of manifesting what you desire into physical reality. If it was that easy, we wouldn't have to work. We wouldn't it, no obstacles. We would just think our way into um, millions or think our way into or visualize our way into the things that we want. But as smart people or people who have actually manifested something, it takes more than that. That's an important part of it, but it takes more. So I've done a reading. I'm doing the reading. I'm going to go through each spiritual dimension from top to bottom, from spirit creation to physical manifestation um, to teach you or to show you to navigate and show myself how to navigate into my first million. So I've already began the process, but breaking it down with the tree of life, it starts with Keter or life force energy, whatever you want to call it. Um, Keter is inspiration. Keter is the will behind it all. It's the source behind it all. It's the creator. It is a desire for the creator to give me pleasure or to bestow upon me the things that I desire, my first million. So I'll pull some cards to see if there was any challenges that I may go through or if uh, just giving me some information on Keter and my first million and how to start the process. So what I got was transformation. So what this is telling me is my first, um, what's going to happen when I request my first million, and I've already requested millions and millions and millions. So I'll be asking for some outrageous stuff, but it's not outrageous because it's already done. Remember, everything you want is already done. It's just a matter of a process of receiving it in a physical reality. So my first million, it says transformation and change. It talks about life evolving through cycles, 
A transition from one form to another, death and rebirth, let go of the old and welcome the new, allow things to happen for my highest good. So this is just telling me that in order for me to receive that first million, I'm going to go through a process of trans, a transition, um, releasing the old and welcome the new. I've already started that because I was once an employee working for the federal government, I had my master's degree, I still have my master's degree, but working, it was a whole different life. And as my goals changed, it required me to transform or end the old and pursue the new. So anyway, this is about transitioning from one form to another, from one life to another, and um, allowing things to happen for my highest good. So it's basically telling me the things that's happening in my life or that happened in my life is a part of my process of transitioning from who I was, an employee, 65000 a year, into who I want to be. A millionaire then we have the ten of water the ten of water is fulfillment happiness satisfaction but it says well-being is my natural state serenity peace well-being good fortune everything happens as it should so we're gonna go through each dimension uh, and let me take talk about these two together then we have the hangman so these two is about is sacrifice and surrender again i've already made sacrifices and i've already surrendered my life to you know life force energy so that i can manifest my first not i mean it is the inspiration was financially um motivated at first but that's okay be honest with yourself anyway i've already surrendered my life in order to manifest this new life but it says serenity peace well-being good fortune everything happens as it should Sacrifice and surrender are necessary. Nothing in life is free or happens on my own timetable. Until all elements are in place, surrender to the greater will. Let go of attachment to how I think it will be. Surrender and wait to see how things play out. So what is this telling me? On the way to my first million, I will go through some things. Nothing in life is free. It's not just going to be given to me. Again, transformation. I'm going to go through a process of releasing the old in order to welcome the new. That's going to require sacrifice. That's going to require surrendering myself to the will of life force energy. Again, I'm asking life force. I want you to give me what you want me to have. My first million, my whatever it is that you want. My And this is about my first million. So life force energy is taking me through the process and it's going to require patience because it's not going to happen and it hasn't happened on my own timetable if we all do it and we'll want it immediately right but it's not happening in my timetable or yours it's going to take me through a process of surrendering of sacrifice and until all elements and all spiritual dimensions which is 10 of them until all spiritual dimensions are in place i have to let go of attachments it's not going to happen until all are in place So, um, one second. Somebody is asking for a tree of life reading, so I'm stopping. So I can send her the information. Okay, so it starts there. We're going to go through each spiritual dimension, 10 of them, in order for it to be manifested. So it's not going to happen until what you requested is manifested or went through each spiritual dimension, balanced itself out, and became in physical reality. And we're going to go through each, but we're just going through the first one, which is key to right now. Then we have um, I was supposed to speak on this to a fire. I don't think I did. It says, trust in the unknown, trust in the process. Excuse me. The light of God helps illuminate my way and the universe aligns me to bring me what I need. So again, what Keter, what we're learning from Keter, life force energy is 
in this part of the in this phase, part of the journey, we just have to trust. We trust in the unknown, trust in the process, and allow the Spirit of God to illuminate the way. Be in tune with your intuition, and um, the universe will align you to bring what you need. Align me to bring me what I need. So what is the opposite of this? The opposite of this is a lack of trust. So you know you're in balance and you're not going to receive um, if you're in balance in the way of Keter because you don't trust, because you are in a rush, you're not patient, um, because you, you, you have the inability to trust that you'll get what you need. So we're all, you know, that happens in journeys sometimes. You just got to make sure that whatever is happening along your way, that you're in trust. That's why things like this reading is important because it's giving you insight into the process so that when you reach an obstacle, you know what you're doing to block yourself. So if you're blocking yourself from Keter, which is life force energy, the creator, this is the person that is giving to you, not person, or the, the energy that gives to you, the life force energy that gives to you. So if I'm in a position and I'm talking to myself, <laughs> Um, anyway, if I am, okay, let's say my son, I tell my son, I'm going to give you, no, my son requests $20. I said, in order to get the $20, you have to trust me. And you have these 10 other, you have these nine other things that you need to do in order to receive from me. But you first must trust that you'll get it. If you don't trust that you're getting it, if you don't trust in the process and trust in the unknown, then you block it. So we're going to call the opposition. Any person, place, or thing that blocks our path to receiving from life force, from the creator. So that's self-doubt. That's doubt from other people. That's fear. That's a lack of trust in the unknown. That's um, limited thinking. Because with the creator, with life force energy, anything is possible. Anything. So when you receive doubt or you experience doubt or you experience a lack of trust, that's blocking you from receiving from life force energy. So this is just telling me to make sure that I'm trusting in the process and that I know that the things that I desire, that I ask of life force energy, the creator, is possible and is happening. Then we have the ace of water, which is unconditional love, overflow of abundance, optimism, and being led by spirit. I've already talked about this. So just making sure that you remain with that. I remain optimistic and that I'm in energy of increase and overflow and that I'm in energy of abundance. I know that what I requested is happening. And through each part of the process, through each phase, I'm getting closer and closer to it. Um, so that is part one, which is key to her, uh, receiving from life force energy, life force energy. It's the first part. It's the beginning. So it's day one of creation. Um, and then the next phase is chokma, which is wisdom, which is intellectual development and analysis. And the reading is going to go through any challenges that I may have in the areas, any challenges, pros or cons that I may have in the areas of intellectual development and analysis. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and get to that. So the next phase is to navigate the spiritual dimension of Chokma, like I said, of wisdom. It's about intellectual ability, development, and analysis. So of course, on in the physical realm, we think of plans, we think of development, we think of you know strategies and writing down a plan, which is fine. Of course, it's a part of it too. But honestly, more so, this is about the spiritual dimension of wisdom, which is basically about going through obstacles, but having the ability to navigate them without losing sight. So for example, it connects to the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So when you navigate the spirit realm of Chokma, um, it says, look deeply into something in the situation and ascertain the truth. It's the beginning of the creative process. It's intellectual development and analysis. 
and it's basically about radical acceptance. So as it pertains to my first million, I pull some cards. How can my first million, can, what, how does it connect or how do I navigate through the spiritual realm of Chokma, which is wisdom? So what I got is not for you on the bottom of the deck. It immediately starts talking about um, rejection. So on my road to my first million, and I've already experienced this, I hope I'm, I'm done. I hope I'm done with the rejection because it hurts. So, but the key and the wisdom would be to accept the rejection as God's protection instead of being all emotional about it. But, you know, I, I'm just now doing this tree of life reading. Of course, I went through it already and I didn't take it well. But it says a clear knowing that something is being denied um, you, that rejection is God's protection. There are times when it appears that no matter how deeply you desire something, no matter how hard you work at something, the results you seek always seem to elude you. So this is me going through rejection, maybe in book sales, in my business ventures, just everything that I've been trying, you know, going through rejection of people, places, and things that I've dealt with on my journey. It's a part of it. It's, it's a part of the spiritual dimension of Chokma. But anyway, it is, it's as if you don't really get to be in the game and you feel you're just watching from the sidelines. And I felt that. The appearance in this card indicates that you are not going to attain what you want right now. That indeed your dreams are, your dreams for the exact thing will not be fulfilled right now. But radically accept that not everything is available to me when I want it. Take heart, for there are benevolent forces who desire the best for you and have a much clearer idea as what's for your highest good. Rejection is God's protection. Something much better that will make you truly happy is on its way. Trust this. So this is about not just, um, it's not about what I've requested being rejected. It's more so about it not happening at the time that I want it to happen or how I want it to happen or the means in which it is to happen. Um... It says you can strategize and project and systemize and invest all your time and energy, but sometimes your best laid plans seem to go away in spite of it all. Keep in mind that no effort is wasted. Fast fail and learn from defeat, then keep going. You will eventually succeed, although perhaps not at this game, not at this time. Know when to fold your cards. So wisdom is a radical acceptance of the things you cannot change to a change of things you can and of course, the wisdom to know the difference. So rejection is a part of this process, the spiritual dimension of me making my first million. I already did that. Did I take a will? Eventually. <laughs> then we have um, round and round. These are lessons. These are cycles to break. Revisiting a pattern from a new perspective. It's a period that I've gone backwards. I'll be standing at a higher level, gaining wisdom, do something better, break a cycle. So I'm going to revisit a pattern. So a part of my road to millions would be breaking free of old patterns that no, that don't serve um, where I'm going in my future. So that's jobs, what I went through, and I pull cards to see which is. The devil card is like a job. No offense to those of you with jobs. But the devil card is like being stuck in limited thoughts and behaviors. Um, we have the five of air, the eight of water, the nine of fire, the moon. Excuse me. <laughs> Things from my past that I haven't let go of that is not a part of my future. So you basically, or I basically go through lessons and cycles. Um, but the more I go through them, I see them from a higher perspective and I learn from them so that I can break it. So if I, if you have a cycle, if I have a cycle, which is on my road to my first millions and it's getting in the way from me making a million, I'm going to revisit that cycle until I learn the lesson. Then we have unfinished symphony, uh, which is tying up loose ends, completing cycles, practicing radical acceptance, completing projects, finishing work, finishing phases. Um, so this is basically phases that I'm going to have to go through or finishing what I've started, which is, you know, the process of making millions or the spiritual path of success is what I started before. Just basically finishing what I'm starting. So if you have, or like I have a million as my first 
tree of life reading or a business as my tree of life reading and, and what I've asked from the spirit room, what I've asked from life force, energy of God to manifest and create for me, I have to finish it. You can't halfway do it and then expect results. So the dimension of wisdom is completing cycles, going through what it, losing things and realizing that rejection is God's protection. But regardless of how many times you're being rejected, it's you continuing to strive towards what you know you can is already done. So I've already had my first million. I just have to manifest it. So it's me not giving up until I've made, until that million has is in my account. And even then, you go for your next one. So um, that's what Unfinished Symphony is about. Then we have Blessed. Oh, wait, I think I skipped new life. Then we have new life. New life is a new life. Birth of new ideas, opportunities, um, inspiration, and bring hope, seeing dreams come true. So having op being optimistic about my ideas, being optimistic about the life that I'm creating, being optimistic about making my first million, and completing my ideas. Breaking the cycle of incompletion. Breaking the cycle of doubt. Breaking the cycle of going back and forth to maybe an old life, holding on to an old life when I should be moving forward towards my new life. So basically, continuing and striving forward regardless of what's happening in the background. We have blessed um, underneath the card that was on the bottom. And blessed is about an unexpected willfall, good fortune, opportunity, and receiving. So knowing that a blessing is coming through, knowing that a blessing will come through as long as I continue to strive towards my goals and I go through uh, rejection, knowing that it's God's protection. We have the King of Cups on the bottom and the Seven of Cups right under there. That's confusion and the hangman right under there. That's confusion as things um, may seem like they're taking a long time. So when we're in a period of transition or when I'm in a period of transition, I may experience some confusion. Like things that are good for me may look like they're bad for me or things that are bad for me may look like they're good for me. So um, I may experience some doubt or some, some sort of confusion um, on the way. That's for example, me quitting my job and not having any money. On the outside looking in, somebody might say, how are you gonna make your first million when you just quit your job? But if that was what I was supposed to do on my path and it's leading me towards the manifestation of my goals, regardless of what it looks like, that was the right thing to do. But I might experience some confusion because on the outer rim, in the physical rim, it may not look like I chose the right path, but in the physical rim, in the spiritual rim, that rejection or that sacrifice was God's protection because it's leading me towards the manifestation of my goals. So when I navigate the spiritual realm of chokma, of wisdom, I have to be aware of being confused about what's for me and what's not for me. Then we have the King of Cups. The King of Cups is like, regardless of what's going on in the background, regardless of the storms, regardless of the rejections, regardless of whatever's going on in life, my hands out like this because I remain in energy of expectation because I know what I've requested is already done. It's already in existence. I just got to get it. So I know I have the wisdom to accept things that are happening, but also remain in the energy of expectation because I know creative life force energy wants to give to me. I just have to go through each individual phase to get it. Then it is, did I forget to write? I forgot to write one of them down. Uh, which is the Ace of Swords that came out. Then we have, yeah, so also the King of Cups is about having your foundation on a rock. Like being, having the wisdom to know um, what I've just said. Having your foundation on a rock, being unmoved, regardless of the things that's happening in the background. And what could be happening in the background? <laughs> challenges. This is the Nine of Wands. So I'm going to go through some challenges. Or I, I know I've already went through some challenges on my road to my first million. But it's going to behoove me to be confident guard myself against the storm, remain strong, resilient, and overcome obstacles. There'll be conflict and tension, um, instability. I'll probably take a blows, blows to my ego and pride. Um, it will seem sometimes that everything is working against me. But again, I have to rise above. I have to continue to work hard and rise above. Then we have the Eight of Cups, which is movement which is um, 
It says, moving on, abandonment, journey, dissatisfaction, leaving something, getting behind. That's exactly what I just talked about. Moving, leaving behind things that are not in the path. Like, if your path, like my path to my first million, required me to sacrifice my job, the Eight of Cups is me walking away from that job. Or the Eight of Cups is me walking away from a location. Or the Eight of Cups is me walking away from people, places, and things that are not um, conducive to my journey. So, yeah, moving on and following the journey. Rejecting complacency and moving towards my goals. Then we have the Ace of Swords. Now, this might, now if you order a Tree of Life reading for something that isn't, it, everybody may not have to walk away from something because your goals may not be my goals. I did mine on my first million, so it's going to require a lot to break the cycle of mediocrity, complacency, poverty, low income. It's gonna take some work to get there. So it's gonna require for me to do more, to get more. If you request less, it might require for you to do less, but you'll have less. Then we have the Ace of Swords, which is determination, clarity, a breakthrough. Again, so it's almost like each dimension has a reward at the end of it. With Chokma, it is clarity of mind, it's determination and it's a breakthrough. Um, so on my journey, it will take intellectual capacity, determination, focus, clarity. Um, you are ready for new challenges and huge changes and awakening. So regardless of what's happening in the background, a breakthrough will come if I remain determined and get clarity of thought. So while the spiritual realm of Chokma may, Chokma may seem like um, it's all just about mind and strategy, intellectual development and analysis, that's a part of it, but it's also about radical acceptance and wisdom, knowing that um, what's happening in your life is leading you towards, what's happening in my life is leading me towards the manifestation of whatever I requested from Life Force, which is my first million which is millions, but I just did this on my first million because you gotta make your first million before you get to your second, unless I make three at the first, but you still gotta get to one before you get to three. So yeah, <clears throat> pull some clarifying cards and they're all about the same thing. Ultimately what's fueling behind it is desire, uh, fulfillment, more life. That's the fuel behind it all. Keter is the fuel behind it all, but Chokma, is the wisdom it is the things that you have to go through the things you have to sacrifice um the wisdom to know that these things are happening in order for you to meet that goal so there is my tarot reading on chokma the next spiritual dimension that it will have to go through is bina which is understanding okay so this just got part stuff Navigating through the spirit realm of Bina, which is understanding, is about comprehension of basically what you've learned in the spirit realm of wisdom, Chokma. So the spiritual dimension of Bina is about um, basically conceptual analysis and reasoning and the physical manifestation of it. So Chokma is like accepting the things you cannot change and be not is acting on it. So it's going through the actions or the process of manifesting wisdom into your life. For example, it starts off with, remember I said rejection is God's protection. So when my desires navigates through be not or wisdom, the spirit realm or spiritual dimension of wisdom, it lets me know that there I will be rejected or how I have been rejected or I'll go through the process of rejecting and also accepting things that I cannot change and wasn't know the difference and also um, intellectual ability to manifest my goals. So that's all in one. It starts off with the Six of Cups. So when my desire manifests through the spirit realm of Vina, I'm going to be tested with someone, something or someone from the past. Now this... I'm speaking in past tense because I've already went through this. 
So when I'm doing the Tree of Life readings for other people and you haven't went through it, it will be projecting. But for me, I've already went through the spirit realm of Vina or the dimension of Vina um, based on what these cards are. So anyway, when my desire manifested, this is a test. Look at each dimension as a test. So when I'm navigating or my desire is navigating through the test of Vina, um, it looks like I'll be going through some sort of, or that I went through, holding on to someone from my past. Um, also, mm, the Eight of Pentacles came out with it, so it's like a routine. Someone from my past, so I feel like it's something that I, a cycle that I needed to break that I've done over and over again. So a part of that cycle was someone from my past, and I already know who it is. I'm not going to mention. Um, so it's almost a level of comfort. Something that, or someone that I had to let go from my past. Ace of Swords is letting you go. It's a breakup, but it's also setting yourself up for a breakthrough. And we have the Page of Pentacles moving forward on new opportunities. So the Six of Cups is not only um, about walking away from people from my past, but also things in my past, like a job. I keep saying that, but that was a part of my journey to my first million. It's walking away from people, places, and things in my past, but it, it was hard. It was like I, you know, it was easy to let go of the job or not easy, but, you know, it was easier to let go of the job than it was to let go of people and focus on my work. But it was definitely an obstacle that I had to overcome. Then we have anxiety, we have action, and we have caring connections. So it was a lot of hard. It was very hard for me to overcome the obstacle of masculine energy in my life. Uh, and caring connection. So as it pertains to men, honestly, these cards are very personal. I almost don't want to speak on it, but it was anxiety again. We have anxiety on here, what, two times. We have Eight of Cups walking away from familiar situations into um, other situations, still experiencing loss with the Five of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles, um, which is loss of fertility. And I went through that as a part of my journey. I'm not saying that you'll have to lose fertility in yours, but in mine, I went through loss of fertility. I walked away from marriage. I experienced disappointment and confusion as it pertains to love. Um, I pursued higher knowledge. Understanding is also about higher knowledge and pursuit of higher knowledge um, as a part of my journey. And then we have the devil here, which is being chained to the past, but also just overcoming the obstacle of a limitation to freedom, um, being chained to people, places, and things who were no longer a part of my journey. And the emperor is a choice here between partnerships. Um, and ultimately, it leads to the Ten of Cups, which hasn't physically manifested yet, but it ultimately leads to a choice between masculine energies and also coming together as fulfillment and family. I feel like... I know that I did this one on uh, my first million, but that's just a small aspect of what is to come from my life because on my journey, it was more than just a million. It was like I gave a life to get a life. Uh, that's what the transformation card is about. So the cards that are coming out is giving a life to get a life. And my first million is a part of that. So really what this should be labeled is more life. This is the journey that I took to more life, which is leveling up um, period in life and graduating to my higher self and becoming one with my spirit and just leveling up in life period. So it's, it's going to take overcoming an obstacle of movement, relocation and travel, freeing myself from the past and, and limitations, people in places and things that's not a part of my journey. We have the maggots on the bottom of the deck. We have the hang one again. It keeps coming out because the hang one is about a life for a life. It's about resurrection and it's about um, sacrifice and surrendering to the process. So this is still in progress. 
because this hasn't manifested yet with the Ten of Cups, fulfillment and happiness and family completion. In the choice between a partner, we have the Emperor and the Empress here, which is a partnership. In the middle, we have the Two of Swords, which is a choice, a stalemate, a pause in between the two. I already lost a baby. I already walked away from things and experienced anxiety and confusion as it pertains to love and heartbreak, as it pertains to marriage and love. But the next step is family completion. So I'm almost there, but I haven't made it. So right now, potentially in the energy of a stalemate between me and my potential partner, nobody is, you know, nobody moving towards it. It's almost like a break or a stalemate. Nobody compromising or moving forward towards each other. So this just made it clear that this is more than about a million dollars. Um, so I might have to rechange this title. This is about more life. So not only money, but also family completion and also leveling up in life and also um, reaching to the highest level of existence. Because that's what my journey was about. It wasn't just millions. It was about more life. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. So this was about abundant life. So I guess I shouldn't have titled it my first million. Because this isn't what I'm starting today. This is what I started honestly three years ago. Three, four years ago. So the next spiritual dimension that... I will be going through is the spiritual dimension of dot which is knowledge but also the why behind everything um let me see if I could just pull some cards for this one I think I'm going to pull monology to see what I will be challenged or what I have been challenged through the spiritual dimension of that spirit of the Lord as it pertains to my journey. What can you tell me about navigating through the spirit realm of that? Interesting. Same thing. Well, not the same thing, but it says, Don't let the past hold you back. Expect powerful change. Show the world the real you. Right under there at the end of a tough cycle approaches. So, what I feel like this is saying is. Becoming one or receiving insight in who I really who I really am and what I really want out of life and showing that to the world, not being afraid to be myself, not being afraid to show the real the real me. A full moon in Aquarius also says detaching from something. Um, detaching from the old. In a relationship, it says, yeah. But it also says the situation is going to take a very unexpected turn. So it says you either need to let go uh, or someone is thinking they are the ones who need to let go, perhaps of you. So it's about letting go of my past because both of these is about letting go of the past and move forward towards your future. And once I do that, expect powerful change. That is your third eye. It is the insight that you get from the first dimension, which is Keter. It's the insight, the vision that you have of your life before it manifests. So if you see yourself as the most powerful person in the world, that is you seeing it before it manifests into physical reality. It's you receiving the information or the inspiration from life force energy, Keter. And then that is being able to maintain that or hold, or hold on to that um, image or that vision even if it hasn't manifested in the physical reality. Expect powerful change, I believe it's just reiterating that. Expecting it to manifest. As you let go of the old, knowing that the new is coming. But it says, if you want affirmation that you can achieve your dreams and get the desired outcome in a situation, then this is it. Yes, exactly what I'm saying. Like knowing that it's possible and having, um, knowing the truth, the truth of who you really are. If you if that's the powerful person in the most powerful person in the universe, then that's what that is. But that's me seeing myself as I truly really am and using that energy and that inspiration and passion to walk away from people, places and things in my past that don't serve who I really am. So when you navigate through the spirit room of dots, 
Um, like for example, in my first million, that's me seeing myself as a millionaire and walking away from things that don't resonate with being a millionaire before it happens in physical reality because I received that information from spirit. I hope that is clear. It's definitely clear to me. So the next spirit room or dimension that your desire has to go through is chest. Chest is the first emotive attribute. It is the desire to be created, the desire to um, give, the desire for manifestation and out of reality, kindness and love. So like I said before, the creator, life force energy, wants to create the things that you want. It wants to create the things that I want. When it goes to the spiritual mention of chest, if it was imbalanced, that means we could just receive infinitely from, you know, the creator from life force energy without any challenges. But of course we know that's not how it works. The one that balances out chest is the spirit realm of might or gubara, whatever you want to call it, it's restraint. So instead of receiving everything like chest, it is balanced with restraint, which is worthiness, which is earning. So let's say um, uh, your kids, our kids, your kid wants to continuously receive a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. Instead of just giving them a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, you say, you have to earn it. Because if you continuously give a million, a million, a million to me without me earning it, it loses its significance and also it loses its value, period, in life, but also to the person that it's given to. So the way life force energy balances that out is through Gavara, which is restraint, which is worthiness. So it gives you the opportunity to be worthy of receiving whatever it is that you want to receive. So um, it makes you earn, basically. It makes you earn. It's the pressure. So on one end, Gavara is might, meaning all restraint. On another end is chest, meaning all giving. It meets itself in the middle, which is Tiferet, which is mercy, which is beauty, which is balance, which is pleasure, uh, which is God's grace, um, life force energy grace. So it's like the middle point, it meets you halfway. So in order to get, in order to meet halfway, you got on one end, um, so basically you put in the effort. I put in the effort to earn my first million or for a more life, which is what mine is really about. Um, the spirit meets me halfway. So let's pull some cards. I'll use this one to see what life force energy has to say about navigating through the spirit realms of chest, Gavara, and Tiferet, which is mercy, restraint, and kindness, loving kindness. What challenges that I go through through these spiritual dimensions? Yep, I love it. So the first thing that came out is the Knight of Pentacles. So this is showing me off back that a challenge or I'm going to have to learn how to routines, how to set routines in order to constantly pursue my goals, work on it every day, take, take one day at a time. But it says he knows exactly what he wants and where his destination is. He moves steadily towards his goal. When he reaches that goal, he strikes with all the force of the earth that is to his summit. So this is me every day working towards my goal. This would be a damn shame. If this was about my first million, I fucked up because <laughs> my spending, because my work ethic sometimes hasn't been up to par. Um, but this is some person who works steadily towards their goals. Now, considering this is actually about more life in my spiritual journey, now I worked on that. I worked the fuck out of my spiritual journey. So I'm certain that I've been, I worked on that every day. So I know I'm progressing it for more life, which also encompasses financial freedom. I work towards that so I, I can rest assured that I'm on the right path. But if this was strictly for my first million, this is me or you every day working towards your goals, knowing what you want and going for it with all the force. Um, what else can you tell me about navigating? I think the five of wands is trying to come out. Navigating through the spirit realm of Gavara, um, chest and cigarette, mercy. Okay. 
heavy burdens and responsibilities is what's coming out, which is Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is about carrying extra burdens. So again, this the spiritual dimension is about earning. So it's like the scripture, faith without works is dead. This is you putting in the work. This is me putting in the work to make my first uh, million or for more life. Um, but it's conflict here. It's emotional stability. Um, this is five of wands could be competitive energy. Could be internal and external conflict. Going through the obstacles, but not letting the obstacles stop me. Yeah, it says the world tosses dozens of obstacles in your path. When gathered together, these minor obstructions become overwhelming. Answer with renewed vigor. So, excuse me, I'm sorry. This is overcoming obstacles, remaining emotionally intact, and working towards my goals every single day. Then we have the Six of Pentacles, which is equal give and take. You receiving on the level that I give. So, whatever energy is put in, um, that's what Tiferet means, mercy, meeting me halfway, um, being met halfway, being told. So for example, I put in energy for these readings, whatever it is that I'm doing to manifest more life, whether it be through charity work, whether it be through whatever work that I do, readings like this. Six of Pentacles is spirit or life force energy matching my effort. So it's like, bam, okay life force energy i want to give you everything you want i want you to get this first million but i'm not just going to give it to you you have to earn it but when i see that you've continuously worked hard towards your goals i'm gonna meet you halfway so this is life force energy meeting me halfway towards my goals and then on the bottom of the deck this is also union but this is patience because it's not going to be easy with the nine of wands right under it it's going to be it's going to take resilience it's going to take continued effort it's going to take um Continuous effort towards my goals in order to reach and, and, and even carrying extra burdens and responsibilities in order to reach the next level. So as I navigate through the spirit realm of Tiferet, which is mercy, Govera, and chest, like I said, it's just going to take work ethic and continuous effort towards my goals and carrying extra burdens and responsibilities knowing that spirit is matching me. I'm doing this now. So I wonder where I am in my journey. Let me see. Where am I in this? Where am I? Um, momentum. Ooh, I'm almost there. So your side is foundation. And when I seen the emperor card, the first word that came to my mind is foundation. Then I have the death card as transformation. And then... The Eight of Wands. Um, let's see. Hold up. That looks like Eight of uh, Eight of Hearts. Hold on. No, that's not Eight of Cups. I think that's Eight of Wands, like I thought it was, which is momentum. I'm on the right. I'm almost there. Hold up. The Eight of <laughs> Eight of Wands. Yep. It's momentum, it's swift movement, busy activity change. Life is coming at you fast. This may be a flurry of activity that will be exhilarating and rewarding. Try to keep up with. The Eight of Wands is a positive card relating to career and self-development. It does not speak of overwhelm, but rather a period of rich experiences and options. Be ready for an abrupt increase in your pace of life because this card, uh, this is a specific kind of activity it may resemble. Dominoes falling into succession after one swift motion. Your goals are clear and the concentration will soon pay off. I'm on the right track. Then we have the world here, which is in expansion, which is um, things come a full circle, the successful completion of the cycle. And it's the final card in the major arcana, which is physical manifestation. So I'm almost there. I'm close, again, to more life, and which includes financial freedom and abundance, family completion, life fulfillment, and peace. Wow. All three of these are major life changes. All three of these cards are about major life changes. So I'm on the cusp of a major life change. 
many when this reading is watched by a lot of people i already have been look at this is success right here this is success achievement happiness and union this is opportunity this is financial stability and security and right under there's the knight of swords which is a fight so i'm almost there i'm very close so when i do y'all readings I'll, I'll check and see where you guys are as well but i'm very close so anyway the next spiritual dimensions that it will go through and we're on the seventh one um, the seventh and the eighth one will be victory Nietzsche, and hot glory this is also about um obstacles um it's also about sacrifice and it's also about receiving too much without effort so um i'm gonna pull some cards and then start part three of this video in a moment okay boom so now we're on the spiritual dimensions of Nietzsche, or how do you say that, victory, <laughs> which is the power to overcome and the confidence to overcome obstacles in a way of receiving, and the spiritual dimension of hot, which is glory, which is Aaron, the Bible character is Aaron, I believe. Glory and receiving too much without effort and obstacles. It's like Aaron gave, gave, and gave, but no limitations. So it's finding balance between um, receiving and overcoming obstacles to receive. Uh, it is similar to the last dimension, um, but I believe the difference between the last dimension and Hyde and Nietzsche is leveling up. So yes, loving kindness and might is about earning, receiving, it's about earning and putting yourself in a position to earn what you've requested from life force energy. But high and which is acknowledgement, which is glory and victory, is about continuous advancement and receiving and the obstacles in a way of continuous advancement and continuously receiving. So let me pull some cards to see any obstacles that I'll have in the way of in, in the high and glory dimension. Sorry, it's hard and um, victory. Oh. Okay. Mm. So we have the world, we have the Ten of Cups. Of course, Ten of Cups is fulfillment. The world is expansion. So, but we have it with the Seven of Swords, which is being taken away. So tell me more about this here the obstacle in the way with navigating through the spirit dimension of Hyde and Nietzsche. Confusion. So two sevens came out. Seven relates to victory, the power to overcome obstacles because it's the seventh sephira. So the obstacle may be overcoming um, the enemy. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Um, the scripture goes, John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they may have life. Um, the seven of swords is about steal, kill, and destroy and confusion. So the tactic of the enemy that I'll have to overcome or that I potentially already have overcame is through the obstacle of confusion and through the obstacle of illusions, getting in the way of fulfillment and expansion. What else, Spirit? What can you tell me about navigating through? Interesting. So the Ten of Swords is on the bottom, which is endings, which is some sort of pain. So the obstacle, oh my goodness. What's the Queen of Wands? Eight of Swords is with it, which is feeling restrained, feeling tied up, things ending. So on one end of the scale, which is probably Aaron Hyde, there's expansion, there's fulfillment, there's blessings with the Nine of Cups here, and there's with clarified by the Queen of Wands, which is things flowing to you or things flowing to me effortlessly. On the other end, there's heartache, there's feeling restrained, there's endings. There's the enemy coming to steal, kill, and destroy. There's confusion through multiple options. How do I navigate through this obstacle in order to receive? 
or how did I obstacle um, navigate through this obstacle in order to receive justice? Finding balance. So the idea is justice. Finding balance. Interesting. Overcoming the obstacle through finding balance or remaining balanced. How can I do that? Okay. So the tower is at the bottom of the deck. All right, so it's a major obstacle happening in the spirit realms or in the spiritual dimension of Nietzsche or victory, however you say it, in hot glory. Um, and through these obstacles and through these major changes that I'll go through before I enter the next level of life, more life, um, financial abundance and financial freedom and, you know, making it to the next level of life is going to require for me to remain inspired to remain balanced so the with the justice card and the two of cups if you look at the two of cups it's like union two people coming together um and the page of wands is inspiration and guidance page of wands passionate action is what's more important i need to take action on something and the ten of pentacles is leveling up Clarify the Two of Cups. Is this me being union and union with myself or with someone else? I think this is about someone else. Coming towards with one person and getting even with another. I did not mean for this to be. Um, oh, okay. My, the devil is here. So it does look like in my story, a major key part of my story is another person, a part of my story. And a part of me making it to the next level of life, receiving millions and financial freedom and, and you know, more life. It does look like there is another person that is an obstacle in my path. There will be options for me to choose from. And one of them will be the wrong option, which is what steal, kill, and destroy is. Choosing the wrong option prevents me from going towards the right person. This wrong option could be somebody from my past or being attached to somebody from my past. King of Cups, Scorpio, Pisces. Or um, a cup, Cancer. Which I already know which one of those that is. So it's having options. So union is going to help me get to the next level. Why can't I do it by myself? It's annoying. Why can't I? What's, let me see. Success is going to come. I will get success by myself. I will. What's this king of wands? Visionary leader. I will be a leader of my own, in my own right. I will be... I will step into my power, um, but there's still someone else connected to my ability to make it to the next level or more life. Interesting. Two sevens keep coming up. The sevens keep coming up, which is the chariot, and also the seven of pentacles again, like four sevens came out, which is spiritual completion. So spiritual completion for me will be duality, me becoming one with the duality, meaning a masculine figure, me becoming one with someone else. This is a part of my journey. Um, is there any way I can navigate through that? Not that I don't want anybody, but it's gonna help me with work. There is the emperor card on the bottom of the deck. There is the knight of pentacles. I'm thinking we're going to work together in order to make it to the next level. We probably need each other. Right under there is the Four of Wands, which is union, celebration, and marriage. So I haven't entered this part of the journey yet, but maybe that's next. 
which is the obstacle of coming into union with someone else. Interesting turn of events as it pertains to my personal tree of life reading. It started off with financially being motivated by making millions. It evolved to more life and becoming one with my higher self and my purpose and growing into the person that I was created to be, my true self, as I navigated through each dimension, spiritual dimension. And it's ending, or towards the end, it is coming together with someone else in order to make it to the next level together. Interesting. I didn't expect that. Ay, ay, ay. Last, not lastly, then we have the spiritual dimension of the Asad. The Asad is the truth. It's communication with the spirit realm. It's the realm of receiving. It's what things go through before they become to a physical reality. Before something manifests into a physical reality, with me entering the next level of life, it goes through the spirit realm of your side. That is the one. So the rest of them is like the top three, and then it's three here and three in the middle. Your side is right here, and then physical manifestation is right here. So your side is in its own right. Um, it's the realm of receiving from the divine. Mostly about communication and being an energy of peace. And expectation but let's see what comes out of if I have any challenges in the way of your side so what I've learned from the spirit room of victory and hide is not to let the enemy steal my partnership or whoever that is away from me so when I get to that point in my journey I'll know to choose carefully to be aware of illusions and to choose a person that spiritually completes me. Because the number seven kept coming up. Damn. So an obstacle will be a choice between two things that I want or two people that I may want. And choosing the one that's best for me and in alignment with the next level of my life. That took a turn. But it is what it is. It's my journey so i use this spirit of the lord what can you tell me about your side what can you tell me about your side so your side is six nine this is six nine this represents six nine not beca um, because it's masculine and feminine energy and your side again is the balance of the two so it's the balance of the spiritual attributes and also the physical ones so that's putting in the work that is remaining in faith and, and connection with, you know, believing and continuously in manifestation. What can you tell me about obstacles in your side? So we got the all major life cards coming out. Temperance, the lovers, the tower, the queen of wands again, which is magic, which is power, which is manifestation. So... When it enters Ms. Yusad, there may be another big change. There may be another big change when it enters the spirit realm of Yusad. I might go through another big change. Well, they say whatever is worth having for it, it's not, um, if it's worth it, you know? It's, it's the sun, physical manifestation. One, two, three, four major life changes cards. Seven of Wands, Queen of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, but also standing my ground. You get her, she's standing her ground, fighting against the opposition. So I may have to fight against some sort of opposition. But if you look at me, or if you look at this, this is someone in their power. Things, you see the black cat, she got magic, she has power. And uses that to fight against the opposition and manifest the desire. This this could represent Malkut, which is the kingdom, which is physical manifestation of my goals. The union of your side and Malkut. Come on, don't. King of Swords. Interesting. Power. Authority. 
commanding. to see what the tree of life readings for other people is going to look like mine is super complicated king of swords queen of swords i'll keep that king of swords queen of swords definitely partners union uh, what can you tell me about your side what is this major change here what is this tower that i'll go through navigating through the spirit spirit dimension of your side or that I've already went through. Eight of Wands again here. What is this? Nine of Cups. Not the last thing. So, hey, maybe the major change will be a blessing in disguise. Maybe not so much in disguise. We got a blessing coming through in spirit dimension of this side. What else? Any obstacles? Well, I've overcame the obstacles, right? If I'm on this side. Yep. Success here. Page of Swords is about a message about truth, standing your ground, communicating. All right. So what can you tell me about the last dimension, Mount Cult? New beginnings. That's, just, that's it. The Queen of Pentacles. Something giving birth. Um, pregnancy. Marriage. Endings. But it came with the full card. So as other parts of my life ends, other parts of my life begin. So I can expect marriage. I can expect pregnancy. I can expect endings and new beginnings queen of cups is right under there which is emotional fulfillment um fertility and marriage to be honest i definitely didn't start this journey to be to have kids or to get married i did it for money that's just me being honest but it evolved into something much more it evolved into purpose it evolved into more life. It evolved into spiritual connections. Clarify. Clarify this. Yep. Queen of Earth. Queen of Earth. Fertility. Um, Work-life balance. Stability. And the Fool. Again, new beginnings. Um, new abundant beginnings. Queen of Water. Emotional fulfillment, king of water, a partnership, a breakthrough. So, I got a lot coming. This is interesting. So, that's my tree of life reading um, for more life, expansion. And it does look like I'm close. I'm going to get a lasting message from Spirit. I see. Spirit, do you have any lasting messages? I'm going to use... Which one do I use? Hmm. I don't know why this is calling to me, but I'm going to use the Witch's Wisdom. Spirit of the Lord, what message do you have for me? Foundation. On the bottom. Incubation. Look at that. OMG. Get the FUCA out of here. <laughs> spirit knows. Sometimes spirit knows what you want more than you do. Because I certainly was not expecting pregnancy. Um, Look at incubation. Are you kid? Are you serious spirit? Pregnancy? Is what's coming of this? It, at least success is coming with it. It says, what you have wished for will come about soon. There are underlying factors that need to be considered before completion. A new project is about to take off. Allow your dreams to unfold naturally without forcing the issue. 
You have a reason to feel excited. New beginnings await. Hey, new beginnings. Then we have cleansing and protection. So let's look at water. Water says, drink water, beat the heat. Drill sergeant, beat the heat. Um, water says, cleansing. You are empathetic. I am an empath. Your sensitivity is a gift. Protect it well. You are experiencing new psychic awareness. Visit, vivid dreams are linked with emotion to keep in check. Drink more water. Spend time by the sea. Stop trying to go against the natural flow. All right, I just said beat the heat, drink water. So, but anyway, this is about cleansing, but this is also about enhanced spiritual gifts. Interesting, that's true for me. Then we have magic circle. Magic circle. I'm gonna have to make sure that I'm protected. Don't trust on face value. Learn and practice thorough protection techniques and you are protected from all harm. And remove negative energies from the rooms. So this is saying, as I level up, make sure that I'm protecting myself. Protect against unwanted energies directed by other people, such as negative thought forms. And that just happened yesterday. I was, oh, I wanted to snap, but protecting against psychic attacks, protecting against uh, negative energy from old buildings, from locations. It says, I'm not in immediate danger right now, but make sure I'm placing awareness and taking the next necessary steps to protect myself against all evils and harm. No weapons from against me shall prosper. Then we have foundations and ancestors. So usually when I do these readings, my ancestors tell me not to forget them, not to forget my ancestors who brought me along the way. Um, and I will never forget my ancestors. So they've played a very active role in my dreams. So the spirit, this blessing may come from my hometown. It says, Oh, it says, we hold a deep spiritual connection within our hearts for the ancestral homelands which we are born to. We are connected to other lands from previous lifetimes that call us to visit them. The gods and goddess, ancestors and spirits hold seen and unseen energy of sacred places of power calling us home. What I feel like this is saying is be coming back to my true self, to my true home, potentially as a remnant of the children of Israel my spiritual ancestry and my true ancestry of where I'm coming from, returning home to that, finding my way back there. Connecting with the very essence of who I am and the land that I walked upon long ago. All right, so this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. And that is the end of my Tree of Life reading. If you would like a Tree of Life reading, message me and I'll be glad to do one for you. Right now, the price is one eleven eleven. That may or not go up, but it may. I may leave it there for a while. I wish you the best. Peace.